In this tutorial, we are going to create a VR headset using SOLIDWORKS XShape, a cloud-based subdivision tool for freeform 3D modeling. The following topics will be included in this workflow. You can find what you need to get started and design along with us using the link in the description below. In the start file, you'll find we already have the headband set up in our model in this ordered geometrical set, or OGS. We'll work in the currently activated OGS called Screen Enclosure. Let's begin a new subdivision body by inserting a primitive shape. Out of these options, we can use a box and we're going to drop it onto the origin marked by the X at the center of our model. We can change the number of edge loops. Let's reduce them because it's typically better to start with fewer loops and vertices. We could scale with the arrows, or we can scale by bounding box. Let's enable the option to scale non-uniform and set the first value to 120 millimeters in the X direction. We can set the Y direction to 210 and the Z direction to 100. We now have a sub D body that we can push and pull and manipulate into the shape we want. The first selection to make will be three adjacent faces. If we select one face by clicking and then hold on the shift key while we click this half of the opposing face, the faces between will be included in the selection. If we selected the other half of the face, then the selection would have wrapped around the body the opposite way. Let's add a crease to this selection to break the continuity of the surface and end up with one flat face in the front. Let's repeat this command for the rear. Using the shift key once again, Let's select the rear three faces. Activating the crease command from down in the action bar provides options to edit the severity and smoothness of the crease. Let's leave this at 100% creased, but turn on the smooth option, which shows up in this pink color. Let's click on the headband OGS and hide it. Symmetry is a mode that can be activated and deactivated from down in the action bar or by selecting a plane. Once symmetry is applied, a new edge loop appears in green along the plane. Let's go to the top view to start making some adjustments. We can box select the vertices on the right side, and we can rotate these vertices by clicking and dragging the arc on the manipulator. If we click and release on the arc, the ruler appears, and we can click and drag this to 15 degrees precisely. While the robot manipulator is still active with our selection, we can click on this arrow exposing the ruler. This time, we'll click on the number 0, so we can manually enter an input of 2.5 millimeters. Now let's box select the three front vertices we can see from the top view and use the point at the end of the arrow to scale these points out along the Y direction. Using the shift and arrow keys allows us to switch to different orthographic views. Let's look at the right side of our model. If we box select the top right vertices and click and release this arrow, we can click and drag again in standard increments to translate down by 10 millimeters. Let's repeat this for the bottom vertices, pushing these up by 15 millimeters. If we select one of the horizontal edges, a context toolbar appears and we can choose to insert new loops. To carve out some space for a user's nose, we'll select this single point to translate it. But we can right-click on the center of the robot and change the orientation to XYZ. Let's now translate this upward in the Z direction by 25 millimeters and inward in the X direction by 25. We need to create a recess where the screen will be, so let's use the Shift key to select these four faces. We'll use the Subdivide tool to divide our selected faces, providing more localized control. We need an extra edge loop around here, so we'll select one of these vertical edges and use the Insert Loop command once more. We want to add creases to a series of edges, so we can select one face, and while holding the Shift key, we can select the opposite side of the adjacent face to select the entire loop of faces. 
We can then add our crease from the action bar so we can adjust the smoothness of the crease. Next, let's select the inner four faces and push them inward into the part by 50 millimeters. Because of how we made the pocket for the user's nose, we now have a curved face for our screen, but we want it to be flat. Let's hold the shift key to select these four faces and choose the Align Coincident command from the option on the context toolbar. Let's add a few final touches by box selecting the very front vertices and scaling them in slightly. While those vertices are still selected, we'll use our shift and arrow keys to switch to a side view and scale them in slightly in that direction as well. We may want a bit more curvature from the side profile, so we can always insert another loop. And finally, we'll add a slight bevel on the front face. If we start to make a box selection but return our cursor to the start point, we are now able to perform a lasso selection. And let's translate those vertices out by 2.5 millimeters. Our final shape is complete, so let's show the headband OGS again. Also, keep in mind that the headband is made from a single sub-D surface that you are free to manipulate and make changes to. Feel free to continue modeling and make this design your own. And if you'd like to see more tutorials, check out the SolidWorks YouTube channel.